You're listening to Floy Insider, a podcast for creative entrepreneurs who want a fresh perspective on business, communication, and art. Hi, Chanel. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> or good good afternoon, I guess. Uh, we're, it's, it's the transition between morning and afternoon, so we'll go with either one. Perfect. You're in Atlanta, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Of course. Thank you for inviting me to do this. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Um, I love your work ever since Thank I found you. it on Instagram and uh, I love what you share. It's just visually so beautiful. Uh, Thank and you. I was really excited to talk to you. By the way, what is that cute face in the background? That cute, uh, the, my, can you see my dog? Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, that's my dog. He's a Yorkie. He just got groomed today. So he looks like fresh and brand spanking new, but yeah. So cute. My little cutie pie. Yeah. Oh, that is so adorable. Oh, Thank I, I, you. I have to focus on, on you instead now and not look at the dog. Oh, sorry. I didn't, my name is covering him. So I didn't even know you could see him back there. No, no, no. That's, that's totally fine. I, it's, it's nice seeing both of you. Um, how are you feeling? How are you today? Today? Um, oh my God. I'm, you know, I'm pretty good. It's a Monday. So usually Mondays are like up in the air, whether it's going to be a good start to the week or like ugh, another work week, but so far it's good so far. Good, good. I hope it continues to be that way. Um, Thank you. Me too. And- yeah, and uh, I'm I'm just really excited to chat and to get to know more about your work. Um, can you give us a brief history of Chanel <laughs> uh, for people who don't know you? Like, what have you been up to so far? Sure. Um, so just as a brief history, I guess um, I've kind of been a creative all my life. It's just been through different mediums. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I find myself being like a, um, a sporadic or like, I have this tendency to get obsessed with something really obsessed for a short period of time. And then I kind of like move on to another thing. So for a while, it was like jewelry making was my thing. And then scrapbooking was my thing for a while. Um, I was into writing poetry for a while. And so, um, Yeah, I've always kind of been a creative that dabbled into various things, Mm. but I guess photography has kind of been something that has always been around. Like I've always had a camera. I've always been the one of my friends that's like taking all the pictures and posting them and sharing them. Um, And then when I got my first DSLR, I think like five or six years ago, I took it more serious because it's a camera. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it's expensive. Like you spend thousands of dollars. So you're like, oh, let me learn how to like use this thing for real. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of when I started getting serious about learning photography and being more intentional. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, since then I've been, I guess, photographing like professionally or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I did read one of your blog posts the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, that that was talking about like a little bit of your journey and it was called am I inspiring or am I still inspiring oh yeah 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 yeah. um and in that one you said and that really resonated with me um because for different reasons I've I also like struggle to just define myself by one thing and Mm -hmm. and you said you mentioned in that blog post uh I'm not Chanel, the photographer, like I'm not that one thing. That's just one part of many. What inspired that blog post specifically? Ooh, uh, good question. Um, Because I feel like, you know, when Instagram first started years and years ago, I I don't even know, it started at least 10, I started Instagram at least 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, It was just this fun little thing. Like you snap random pictures and you share them. And I had like, 14 followers that were like my closest friends who had Instagram too at the time and so it wasn't super serious um and then around that time I guess or or within the time I had Instagram I started taking photography more seriously and so naturally what I shared on Instagram um kind of followed my journey 
as a photographer and becoming more serious and sharing my portrait work and all of that stuff. Um, but then I feel like what happened as a result of that is that people started to put me into the box of Chanel the photographer. When to me, I'm so much more than that. I have a personality outside of photography. I have interests outside of photography mm -hmm. and I want to share those things because I like to share parts of myself, but people who only know me from Instagram or who, who only, um, yeah, who only know me from following me on Instagram might think that's all I'm about. Yeah. And so now I find myself in a place of um, feeling boxed in and feeling like, well, if I'm not sharing photography, do people still want to hear from me? Do people still want to know what I'm interested in? Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of the space I'm navigating or I've been navigating lately. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I totally get that. And, and you do, well, your bio says you are a photographer and a UX designer, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Which, is, which is a web designer. Sorry for my ignorance. You no, 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 it's okay. Anytime I say UX designer, other people who are like UX designers or product designers, they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I know what that is. But anybody outside of that is like, what? what do you, what is that? What do you do? What does that Enlighten mean? Enlighten me, yeah. <laughs> Even my mom the other day, she was like, people ask me what you do. And I'm like, I don't know. I tell them to Google it because I don't know what you do. And I'm like, okay, it's fair enough, mom. Um, but yeah, a UX designer in the simplest terms, um, we basically design products. So that's right, pretty okay. much, yeah. So, but we, we do it through different, like there are different things we have to take into consideration. So we do like user research. So whoever um, the user is of a product, we do user research. And then we also do um, research for the business who um, owns the product or who makes the product. And mm -hmm. then we basically mm -hmm. marry all of that information in order to inform the designs we do for the product. And that's, that's it. I was so far off from that. <laughs> <laughs> I, no it's okay I'm so sorry I have no idea why I thought it was related to websites completely <laughs> it, well it 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 can involve websites if the website is the product then it can involve that for sure yeah, but yeah that's that's, a, that's very elaborate that's a lot of um that's a lot of elements like it um, is yeah. to, to consider that sounds really exciting and um and I guess like yeah there's so many ways for a creative to express creativity and their inspiration and like not not just one channel of like expressing that for some people it is maybe mm -hmm. um that's great for them <laughs> if that happens to be that but it's not for it's not for all of us and I just the other day got a dm about that from someone who was informing me that they were unfollowing me <laughs> because um I I because they didn't enjoy that I was sharing so many different things. Like, why am mm -hmm. I not sticking to one thing like I used to? Why am I sharing all these different things? Photography and writing and podcasts and talking about politics and talking about activism and this and that. It's too many things. Just stick to one lane, to one thing. And I'm like, bye. <laughs> right. That is so that's so bold and almost, um, I'm sorry to this person. I don't, I mean, I, I don't know if they'll hear this, but that's like a bit of entitlement to someone oh, else's yeah. life to yeah. like, you have to stay within these rigid constructs yeah. that I want you yeah. to stay within. It's like, I'm a multifaceted mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I find that a lot of creatives, like a lot of creatives are actually good at a multitude of creative things yeah. if they take the time to explore yeah so I don't know I think that's a bit unfair to tell somebody like oh you have to stay just share these things that I like like yeah. uh, okay just unfollow quietly bye yeah <laughs> it, it, I guess though that on social media especially people are like they follow someone for one specific reason often and then yeah they they count on that content like that's what they want to see and obviously there are a lot of accounts on, on Instagram for example who do just one thing or they show just one thing right yeah um, and then I feel like people forget when they follow people like that 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 is a human <laughs> it's not because they only see that one thing and they, they kind of forget this is a human this is not a machine 
they're yeah. not just producing a product and content for me they are actually yeah. a human and as you said not not I'm not just that one thing I'm so many things and I am so layered and I refuse to be one dimensional on social media I understand that sometimes that helps to be one yeah. or one dimensional on social media but I just can't as I can't do it so <laughs> yeah That's fair, um, but it's just the messaging you to tell you like, <laughs> hey, I'm leaving. It's like, okay, it's, this isn't a party. You didn't have to let me know. You could have just like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> see you somewhere else on the World Wide Web. I, yeah, like, have, it, have I a guess beautiful life. <laughs> I guess, I don't know, social media etiquette that people don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but yeah. um, it, it was, it was all kind of in the same um, time when I, when I read your post and I was like, gosh, yes, I think this is like, I have to write about this as well. This is so, so good. This is so, so true. So thanks for the inspiration as well. <laughs> I'm glad it resonated with, with you. That makes me happy. So much. Um, and one of your avenues of self-expression which um, we wrote about before um, recording was, is self-portraits. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd love to explore that a little bit and, and, and like hear about when did you start that? Was that always a thing? Did you start that in lockdown? Um, and, and what do those self-portraits mean to you personally? Why do you take them? Is that simply because, oh, there's lack of people I can shoot, so I'll just do that on myself? Or is there, mm -hmm. Is there something else behind it? Um, well, it definitely started out as uh, I don't want to keep bothering people. Like before I started self-portraits, I would um, I was living with a roommate at the time when I first started. Okay. And so I would like grab my roommate and be like, I have this idea. Like you have to just pose for me. I will I'll pick out everything like the clothes. I'll tell you how to do your hair and your makeup and uh -huh. all of that. I'll set everything up. I just need you to be my model. <laughs> um, and then I would do that with some of my friends as well. I would just text them and be like, hey, can you, are you free like this Friday? I need to shoot, like, let's go. Mm. Um, but then it, it just got so much trying to um, coordinate all of that when I had these ideas that I really wanted to execute and I didn't want to wait on somebody to be available. Yeah. So then it became like, okay, well, I'll just learn how to shoot myself sometimes. Like, If I have an idea and I really want to get it done, because another thing about me, I'm very impatient. So mm -hmm. when I have an idea, I'm like, can I do it right now? Like, when is the soonest I can do it? And so, um, yeah, my self-portraits were birthed from that, from just having these ideas and not wanting to mm. wait to try to coordinate with someone else yeah. and just saying like, okay, well, I'll just learn how to, how to shoot myself. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's how they started. But I guess they've morphed into a way for me to um, express myself and share pieces of myself mm -hmm. um, and sometimes share things that I'm going through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So they've become as well a tool of storytelling, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure where do you like I mean especially last year I guess you didn't do much you know photo shoots many photo shoots last year <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> like like most of us uh with lockdown and and just being at home and not really yeah not being able to work H how did you how did you deal with that as a creative um I guess you could do your other work from home But in terms of photography, what, how did you keep that inspiration going? Or did you just let it go for a while? Did you let it be what it was? Yeah, I think I went the route of let it be, let it be. Um, yeah. Just because I find that, so, you know, I started UX design. I think this year will be two years I've been doing it. Okay. Um, whereas previously I worked for six years in a whole entire different field. Um, I was a chemist working at a toxicology lab. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not as fancy as it sounds. It's like testing urine, drug testing urine. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have some stories from that job. Um, but so I had that job and then photography was like my creative outlet. And yeah. so I could pour myself 
creatively, I could fully pour myself into photography. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I transitioned into UX design, UX design also um, is a creative, a creative job. And so it's like I'm almost, I found myself drained creatively from UX where it's like, oh my God, I don't even have the energy for photography. Even if I do have ideas, taking the time to like flesh them out and do all of the things that need to be done, um, that's a lot of energy. So I was already in that space before quarantine hit, but then quarantine hit and was like a double whammy, like, oh wow, like I'm really just completely thrown off balance by everything. Mm. Um, so I've just been trying to, I don't know, not put pressure on myself to create because I feel like as creatives with Instagram and all the other avenues that have since sprouted um, in the last few years, I, it's almost this pressure to constantly be producing and constantly be putting stuff out and like, here's a new self-portrait, here's another new one, here's another one, here's another one, here's more portraits I've done, here's this, here's that, here's that, 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 that. And I feel like if you can keep going in that pace, then that's like awesome for you. But I, I also feel like it's okay if you feel burnt out or you feel like I don't have it in me right now mm -hmm. to take to take a step back and, and get the rest that you need in order to recharge. And I guess that's kind of the space um, where I'm in right now is I'm, I'm more so in the recharging and just trying to get my footing and I don't know, also figure out what, what does photography mean to me? Because for a while it was, I was trying to make it into a business and, mm. um, you know, make it into something financial, but I think trying to do that, like, I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm not a businesswoman, not at this point in my life. That's just not me. And so it was making me lose my love of photography. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I don't, like, as you can tell, I have a lot going on in my life with all these like moving parts and trying to figure them all out. So I guess at the root of it all, I'm just trying to give myself grace and realize that there's no timeline. Like, yeah, there's really no timeline and, and it's okay if I don't figure it out today, tomorrow, yeah. or even next year, when I do figure it out, it will make sense and it'll be right on time. Beautiful. I love that. That's, it's where so many of us are yeah uh, generally at at some point in life uh, we're all at at like as you say there's so many moving parts and we just don't know what do we want to do which way to go and especially now with everything that went down last year um yeah it still is going happening um it's i think so many creatives are in that space um you know where we might rethink do we even keep doing, want to do this or exactly? Yeah. Do we want to do something else? Do we have to pivot? Do we, what, what is going on? Like, I mean, I had that thought for sure <laughs> as well. Um, and I've been a full-time photographer for 10 years. Uh, and I still thought like, I had moments where I thought maybe I'm, am I even good at this? Maybe I should do something else. Like, yeah. So you're definitely not alone. And I think it's so encouraging to just hear the truth from people and hear how they're really feeling about this. And, you know, with creativity and or inspiration, I, it, I think there's like two ways you can go, right? You can either like push through when you feel right. like, I have no idea. It's like, let me go and find something in my house I can shoot <laughs> or like, yeah. <laughs> you just like trying to push yourself and that can work or you 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 can step away yeah and, and just leave it for a while and I think depending on your situation in that moment both can work at different stages I yeah I went through a creative slump uh oh god I don't even know how long ago that was quarantine has like completely messed up my concept <laughs> of time it so is the any first of March today <laughs> yeah anything that's happened between I'll say like end of 2019 to now 
I don't know when exactly it happened. It just was sometime between that time frame. I don't know. But a few years back, I went through a creative slump. And mm -hmm. at that point, I decided to push through it. And so what I did was start a color challenge. Um, so each month I chose a color and I just photographed oh. whatever I saw in that color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have it, um, I have it up on my blog and it worked. It like helped me to have a goal and to have something I was trying to achieve mm -hmm. with my work. Um, and it helped me get through the creative slump, but this time around, it's just a little bit, it's a little bit different. It's a lot of, it's a lot more going on. Mm -hmm. um so rather than push through it I'm just like taking a step back to figure it all out yeah yeah because it's I get feel like this is more than just a creative slump right now this is literally our lives have changed and the energy around us is yeah very heavy and because of everything going on so it's it's not just the creative question it's so much more isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. how has like generally lockdown been for you you're in Atlanta right mm -hmm. like how has that been there um depending on who you ask I'm asking quarantine, <laughs> well quarantine may or may not actually be happening in Atlanta because oh, okay we the city is open um, people are still going to events, people are still going to clubs, people are still out and about. Um, and I mean, Ooh. I get it. I'm, well, uh, I, so for me, I, I pick and choose, like, um, I'll go to, you know, Target or something like that, but I don't, I'm not going to go to like a club or a mm -hmm. party where people are all on top of each other, mm -hmm. but I also try not to be judgmental about other people's lifestyles. Cause mm -hmm. I don't know, at the end of the day, we all have our decisions to make and mm -hmm. I don't know anyways, but how I've been handling quarantine. Um, I feel like when it first started, honestly, I, I was kind of depressed a little bit. Um, I was sleeping a lot. Mm -hmm. Like when I would clock out of work for the day because I've been working from home since everything kicked off with COVID. Um, but when I would get done with work, I would like sleep. When I, the weekends, I was sleeping. Mm -hmm. And I just got concerned because I was like, I'm spending a lot of time sleeping, but then I'm still tired. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started researching it and found that that could be um, a symptom of like, you know, being depressed. Yeah. Um, so I don't think I am clinically depressed I guess it would be considered but I just feel like I went through yeah a time of being depressed yeah. um but I don't know so that's kind of how it was going when things first kicked off but I feel like now I'm handling it a bit better um I still feel like I miss the old times I miss mm -hmm. being able to call a friend and being like let's go grab dinner or let's just hang out or you know it's my birthday I'm doing a whole weekend of events now it's like yeah. I'll call you we can FaceTime but we don't hang out as much as we used to um so I feel like I'm handling it better but I, I do still miss I miss the I don't I miss our normal lives really yeah oh I feel you me too <laughs> but yeah. yeah and it's funny because in the states not very many cities actually are still doing lockdowns or have any restrictions um it's so different here in Europe <laughs> like um yeah they tried here in Georgia uh and our mayor and our um governor I believe actually got into it over it which is embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. It's like watching your parents that don't agree <laughs> on something and you as the kid are just like, so what, what am I grounded or am I not grounded? Like, can I go to this party or not? It was very much, yeah, embarrassing, but it is what oh it is. Gosh, yeah. It's been, it's been a big year. And also um, with, and not just quarantine and not just COVID, BLM kicking off the way it did, which obviously yeah. for you is not news, um, uh, but that it's become this global um, movement that it wasn't before. Um, yeah. And where people are more aware of, oh, this isn't just an American problem. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's really everywhere. And 
that as well, that has just added so much to what was already yeah. happening. So it's totally understand that you need to sleep and need a yeah. break. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was another big thing during quarantine yeah. that was just kind of heavy. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know, I, I'm not glad that happened, obviously, but it mm -hmm. opened up a lot of conversations that I think Black people, um, we have within ourselves, but that weren't necessarily exposed to, um, yeah, like other races outside of our community. And so having that exposed was, um, on one side, it's nice because it's like, now you know what I'm going through as I walk through this world on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. On another side, it was like, oh, wow, now I'm exposed in a way that like, I don't know that I was ready to be exposed in. Mm -hmm. And then on yet another side, it was sad because it's like, you realize how many people, um, just really did not know um, that like I experienced life differently from you. Like you just really had no idea. And for you, this is a whole revelation when for me, it's like, this is an everyday thing I think about um, consciously and subconsciously as I'm interacting with people, as I'm in the workplace, as I'm going, you know, about my daily life. So yeah, it was, that was a lot to kind of work through as well, but yeah, yeah. How are you doing now compared to, don't know, seven months ago? Um, I feel, I, I, I guess I feel empowered more to speak to certain things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, I, I guess that would summarize it. I just feel more empowered to be like, hey, you know, keep this in mind as a black woman you know, this is, this is a little different for me, or, you know, I handle this differently, or, yeah. you know, just, to, just, it, I feel more empowered to start those conversations yeah. than I probably would have in the past. Okay. That's, that's good to hear. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, it's amazing. And I think people are also hopefully more open to hearing those things and to, to listen, you know? Yeah when you speak and when you have like you know things to actually oh it's, this is you know this is this is like this for me and I hope that the majority of people are open to listening and to receiving that as well right now um yeah it's been major it's been it's been very life-changing um so obviously again like for you this is not news and this was has always been your life but uh I'm glad on for how much the rest of the world now knows as well and and what we're able to to understand and learn now so you know all of this affects you affects us as individuals like our our yeah. outside life affects us creatively yeah um, and the things we create and the the time we we can dedicate towards creating I feel like all of this um all of this flows into that. So it, it still relates. You're absolutely right. It, yeah, it does. It does. It affects what you put out there. Who you are is the foundation of what you do and what, exactly. you, what you produce, right? Yeah. Um, to, I, I'd love to just go back quickly to the self-portraits um, <laughs> and like what you've, um, what you've done with them. It's actually how I found you through a self-portrait that you... Oh made into like a photoshop art piece mm -hmm. <laughs> um, my friend shared it on instagram and it was like um like a beautiful portrait of you like of your face and then with like flowers and butterflies and like really really beautiful art piece and i was like yep follow <laughs> thank you <laughs> I, I like i like to see this it, it was so beautiful have um without going too much into detail i know you have a course on like how you do those self portraits right mm -hmm. but, like can you share a little bit of your process like or, and of your setup what does it look like do you have a remote do you jump back to your you know do you, how do you how do you do it practically 
Yeah. Um, so that my whole like setup thing has been a journey as well. Cause I when I first started out taking self portraits, I started with my Canon T3 was my very first DSLR. Um, and so it didn't have, um, it doesn't like now my camera has Wi-Fi, so I connect it to my phone and I use my phone as my remote. Um, that's my current setup. I'm looking to graduate from that eventually because even that's becoming a hassle. Canon, if you're listening, please improve your um, your app, please. Um, but yeah, when I started out with the T3, I didn't have Wi-Fi and I didn't get one of those um, little independent remotes. So I would do the whole set my camera on like a, a timer. I think it was like five second or no, two second or 10 second timer press the trigger and then run and pose and, and take like five shots at a time and then go <laughs> run back to the camera, push it again, run back and, and pose again. So that was a fun time in life. Um, <laughs> got my cardio in for sure. But yeah, now I use my phone as my remote. Um, and for, I don't know, for myself portraits, I kind of handle it as I would any portrait session. Yeah. I tend to build from the outside in. Um, and so I start with my inspiration and my inspiration can come from a multitude of places. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and so I start like by thinking the bigger picture, like what's the overall mood or vibe I want to go for. And then, you know, what's the setting going to be. And then from there, like, how do I fit into the setting? What does my clothing look like? And how does that mesh with the setting and all of that? And then you know, zoom in even more to what is the posing looks like, look like what, like, how's my light going to factor into it? Um, and that's kind of how I build the whole story. And I go into detail about all of that in my, um, it's now self-paced course on um, clickphotoschool.com. But that's, that's kind of how I build really any session uh, that I do. And I just translate that into my self-portrait work as well. Weird question. Do you mm -hmm. also sweat a lot when you take self-portraits? Because I do. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sweating from like the moving back and forth or just kind of, is it the pressure of it? Because I, I, think, feel it's like... the, I think it's the pressure because I've also taken self-portraits naked. So it can't be like the moving like or like uh -huh. it's not really hot. It's literally just I don't know it's like the pressure and like or maybe like the positioning and then like mm -hmm. trying to look at my remote and the little life view uh -huh. but then I it's I really sweat so much I'm like maybe it's just is it just me then okay it's just me <laughs> I find sometimes people like feel this pressure behind self-portraits and I get it I do. um but I feel like self-portraits are actually should have the least amount of pressure because at the end of the day, no one knows you took those photos except for you and the camera. And like the camera isn't gonna tell anybody. So mm -hmm. the way I feel is if I took 300 photos and like I only have three keepers, no one has to know that 297 of those photos did not work out. Like I will just delete them, pretend they don't exist. Mm -hmm. That, you know, whatever happened in those photos, that wasn't me like these three photos where I look really good like this is me like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the photos where I look the best that's the true me mm -hmm. the photos where I look constipated or like I unflattering or I was cross-eyed or you know I just my body didn't look the best that's not really me that was that's just the camera really capturing me at that moment I wasn't prepared that's all it was so I'm just gonna delete 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 no one knows look at these three over here. They're beautiful. They're gorgeous. Let's admire them together. Cause that's me. <laughs> and like that. So there's no pressure. There's no pressure. It's just you who else has to know besides you. You know, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. I, that's, that is a very good point, but how, do you find that is that, is that, does that come easy to you? That kind of confidence and self-love just like listening to you say that right now I know that when I look at my self-portraits I'm like ah so like mm -hmm. sometimes yeah so critical so frustrated um with the 300 pictures that nobody will see but I see them um mm -hmm. has even like taking the self-portraits have they changed how you view yourself um yeah I would say yeah so I feel like the way I think about it now has just come over time. 
like the more I do it, the more I realize what the situation is and what it isn't. Mm -hmm. So for instance, when I go into a portrait session, when I'm photographing someone else, mm -hmm. um, I know that, you know, I, I take so many photos, but not everyone is going to work. Like it's just not possible. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be the best of the best, right? Um, and those are the ones that I'm going to show to them or that I'm going to put out to the world. So over time, I've just realized, like, I should apply that same mindset to my self-portrait. Not every photo is going to be a winner. Not mm -hmm. every photo is even going to be a keeper. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's totally okay. Mm -hmm. And then over time, I've also um, realized, like, what my flaws and what my insecurities are. Mm -hmm. And you you kind of have to come to terms with them when you're doing self portraits So like for me, my skin is one, I don't have perfect flawless skin. And I already know that I'm gonna have to edit my portraits, my self portraits, like edit my skin. Um, so now it's not like, when it's time to edit, I'm not like, oh God, look at that pimple. Oh God, look like, oh, I have to, do. I'm just like, oh, okay. I know that I'm gonna have to do, 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 do. I'm gonna have to fix this stuff. Yeah. Um, or same with like posing. I know that there are certain poses that like, are just not flattering for my body. And so mm -hmm. instead of harping on like, oh, I can't do this pose or I can't do that pose, mm -hmm. I'm gonna focus on these are the poses that I know will make my body look good or these are the things I know my body can do. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go lean into that um, and focus on the things that like are bomb about me instead of the things that are like less than or yeah, things that are insecurities or flaws. like. I don't know, it's okay, we all have flaws, we all have insecurities, um, but how can you learn to love the entirety of yourself versus those few things that are less than, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of yeah. how I think about it. Mm, I guess that's a learning curve as well with the- Yeah, so so I, I feel like people, a question I get is like, how are you so confident or, um, I don't like there's this assumption that I'm just like the most confident person in the world and it's like eh, I'm not <laughs> I'm I'm not uh I'm not the most confident person in the world I definitely have my times it's just um I push through them and just keep yeah. keep photographing myself through it because I don't know because I I love I love I love creating self-portraits I love sharing my self-portraits so that trumps those times when I'm feeling less confident. You don't have to feel super confident to yeah. start taking self-portraits. Mm -hmm. um, I would say just start. And then as you keep doing it, the process will get easier, just like with anything else. Yeah. Do you find that they are actually, they actually help with the confidence and that the self-portraits are like a tool for self-love as well? Like the more you do it, the maybe the different you see the more different you see yourself is that English you <laughs> you know what I mean uh, yeah 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 um I think I think yeah it it, it increases your self-acceptance hopefully um I'm not gonna say that you know if I'm not gonna say it's a miracle worker yeah. but I feel like it for me at least it did increase my self-acceptance which as a result like your self-love does increase because you're accepting yourself more and you're like this is who I am this yeah. is what I have to offer this is what I look like um mm -hmm. and I, I love this photo of me I love me in this photo I love me so yeah I feel like it does help beautiful thank you so much for that that was really mm -hmm. insightful um and really inspiring for me as well because it's just something I started in the last few months literally just in lockdown <laughs> mm, okay doing proper self-portraits not selfies on the phone you know here and mm -hmm. there like a snap but actually with my camera mm -hmm. a remote and like trying to create something creative and that's yeah I mean, that's in my head what I would do with clients but just with myself so um I'm really interested in that and how other people do it and approach it how they feel about it so that's been really inspiring to hear yeah. <laughs> quick note though um don't let not having a dslr or like a nice camera make you feel like oh i can't do this because you totally can um i've done self 
portraits on my cell phone as well, mm -hmm. um, which sometimes I find it easier to set up because it's like, mm -hmm. I have my little tripod for my um, phone, but you can even still do it handheld. You can just do like from yeah. a shoulders up self-portrait or from a waist up self-portrait. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's more about your intention that changes it from a selfie to a self-portrait. But yeah, don't, don't yeah. let that hold you back, guys. You can still do it with the cell phone for sure. Definitely. And you don't even need a tripod. I don't have a no. tripod. I built a book tripod. <laughs> <laughs> for like for my phone basically yeah. I love I've gotten I've been there's been times where I'm just like grabbing random items and I'm like just leaning my phone like okay if I just lean my phone just like this and it balances okay perfect and then I have to do the whole like push and run and pose and then come back but yeah you can make it work with anything you have absolutely thank you so much for like sharing how you make it work uh, how you create those. Thank you for sharing a little bit of your journey and your passion and how you're feeling about photography and non-photography, <laughs> uh, non-photography creativity. That's beautiful. Um, thank you. It was really, really fun talking to you. Uh, thank you. Hopefully, this was fun. <laughs> hopefully we can do it again. Um, and I hope you have a beautiful day beautiful Monday, beautiful week. Thank you. I hope you do too. Thank you for inviting Thank me to you. do this. Oh, it was my pleasure. Honestly, when, when they asked me like, who do you think, like, who do you want to talk to in terms of photography and creatives? I'm like, like you were one of the first on my list. I was like, definitely oh, uh, want to talk to Chanel. So it was a huge pleasure to just meet you face to face. Um, thank you. <laughs> Thank you.